While waiting, um, it's been uh, a hectic day for us, uh, and uh, as you know, um, when we last met in the subcommittee, we uh, uh, talked about the fact that there was a phrase that was um, supposed to be taken out of the amendments as presented relative to penalties, and it was not. And so uh, we uh, came back, or we are bringing it back, and uh, I will therefore open the subcommittee hearing um, with, with, with Representative McNamara and Representative Flanders in order to uh, have a vote on that amendment. Um, and so on... Uh, Line 32 and 33 on page 2. <coughs> um, and um, the line that was taken out uh, was uh, going to create multiple offenses uh, each day that the uh, offense continued, and that line has been taken out. Um, and as we also heard, um, I think from the gentleman in the uh, yellow uh, sh short sleeve shirt, uh, that there was a time in which uh, if a gun, trans a gun sale goes to a dealer and yet can't be completed for whatever reason, <coughs> um, returning the gun to the owner uh, would require a another or a background check of the owner, even though the owner had taken the gun uh, to the dealer in the first place. So uh, that exception. 25, line 25 on Thank page you. two. Um, on the second page also, um, 24 and 25, if the dealer cannot legally deliver the firearm to the buyer, the dealer shall return the firearm to the seller without requiring a background check, and the transfer to the buyer shall not take place. So it's without requiring a background check is the uh, change there. Um, discussion? Um, if I could have uh, a vote on <coughs> the amendment uh, as finalized, uh, 0371H. Uh, in favor? I move that we. There's no subcommittee now. Mm -hmm. I move this in favor of this amendment. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? And opposed? Thank you. Um, I understand that there is another amendment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Would you present that mm -hmm. amendment, Representative Jones? Sure. Um, this is Amendment 2014-0403H. And this establishes a committee to study the correlation between current New Hampshire law and the low violent crime rate in the state. It replaces the original bill and sets up a study committee. It studies the correlation between current New Hampshire law and the low violent crime rate in the state. It studies whether stricter gun control laws are effective at reducing the violent crime rate in the state. It reviews and it's instructs the committee to review and study national and state publications related to the correlation between stricter gun control measures and the violent crime rate in the state, including data and reports published by the FBI. And the committee shall also review publications by law enforcement, including the Police One survey on the potential effects of proposed gun laws on reducing violent crime. And I have the Police One survey right here which shows that this is a nationwide <coughs> survey of um, over 15,500 uh, police officers. It shows that 70% um, uh, of the police law enforcement do not support the concept of a national database tracking all legal gun sales. And it shows that almost 55% of the police officers think that legally armed citizens are important to <coughs> reducing crime rates overall. And another point in this survey is that 
of the officers think that casualties would likely have been reduced if there had been legally armed citizens at the recent tragedies like Newtown and Aurora. So I believe it's very important that we uh, go ahead and set up the study committee because I think that we are doing the right thing already in the state with the current laws that we have and the study committee would help to uh, provide the information to prove that. Thank you. Point of order. Is, yeah. is this amendment being brought before the subcommittee or the executive committee? The subcommittee. Um, <coughs> comments, thoughts? Representative Flanders, Representative McNamara. Well, listening to what Representative Jones says, I don't, I don't think that the bill that, or the amendment that uh, we just uh, brought forward, what she's saying, I don't think that this is, it, there are two different uh, scenarios going on here. And uh, uh, she made some good points. I uh, don't feel that they have uh, as much validity as she think they may, and I still think that uh, the amendment that we have brought forth originally here will uh, uh, help protect the citizens of New Hampshire from those people who are, uh, should not be possessing a firearm. And I don't think that the, what we call the, those people who have their firearm legally are going to be impacted upon the amendment that I asked you brought forward. Thank you. Um, Representative Jones, I agree that studies, I think, um, would be good. I think it would be good for the um, legislature, the House, and the Senate to explore these issues in more detail. But I don't want to see uh, the amendment that was just passed replaced with the study. I would support a future bill um, of that kind. I would like to bring this amendment forward to the full committee when we accept the bill, if that's okay with you. Yes. Um, Great. And um, I would uh, ask the subcommittee to vote on this amendment just so that it can be official and, uh, and uh, we can close the subcommittee and then uh, open the executive. Um, Representative McNamara, do you want to uh, move? Uh, I don't know if it's the right wording to say the IPL this, this bill. I will make that motion. Yes, I will. Thank you. Um, and in favor of ITL <coughs> and opposed. Thank you. Uh, we'll close the subcommittee and open the executive committee. And we are hearing several bills today. Um, and yes, ma'am. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Representative Shirtliff is uh, sitting in uh, on, on our committee because um, Representative Gidge uh, called this morning, said that he has uh, the flu, that he feels like he wants to die, and that he will not be in this week, but he will be in next week. <coughs> Uh, it is my understanding that that uh, constitutes uh, not uh, being here for a week and therefore able to be substituted. Um, I understand that there's some question about that and that will be taken up um, by uh, leadership. Um, but for today's vote, um, we will have uh, Representative Shirtliff here. And um, because you all have come a long distance um, and uh, because this is such an important uh, issue, I'd like to take up House Bill 1589 first. Um, and uh, as you all know, since uh, it was uh, emailed to you and uh, I suspect that most who are here today to um, see the vote occur, um, you also have seen uh, the amendment. Uh, it was emailed out, and uh, I suspect that you got it, and there were 60 copies made. The only change in the amendment uh, between when we were here last and um, uh, today is, as I have stated, uh, we took out the issue of the multiple offenses and the penalties and uh, added that uh, buyers should not have to go through a background check if. Uh, He's attempted to sell a gun to a dealer, and that doesn't work. Um, this bill, uh, as amended, will um, 
be effective. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, <coughs> only for commercial sales. It will require background checks for commercial sales and not for private sales and not for private transfers. Sale or transfer between two individuals, whether family or friends or acquaintances, um, will be acceptable um, as long as the two people who are party to that transaction know that neither is in a prohibited class. If they are in a prohibited, or if they suspect that they might be in a prohibited class or don't know the other person well enough, then a background check would be required. Otherwise, background checks in this bill would be um, required for things that are not happening within New Hampshire, like an internet <coughs> sale between two parties who don't know each other um, within the state, like um, uh, a gun show where uh, the person is not licensed, um, and therefore um, that commercial sale would now require a background check, um, and any other commercial sale where the parties do not know each other. Um, we've had this discussion, but uh, it's now open for the committee to make comments. Representative Hunt. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you say that, that this bill does not affect a private sale, but then you then go on to talk about whether uh, the two people know somebody's history. So I could say, well, you know, gee, Ed, I've known you now how many years? Eight years since you first elected? Right. So do we know each other? We do. Do I know that you never committed a felony before you moved to New Hampshire? If you don't, this bill <coughs> will require that you uh, uh, that we, if we want to exchange a gun, um, go through a background check. Right. So, so therefore, when you make the statement, this does not affect private sales, that's just not true. Because the fact is, none of us, none of us in this room, have known each other long enough to know that none of us have ever committed a felony. There, that's physically impossible. So the, the effect of this legislation is that every sale, must have a background check. Is that not true? That is not true. I would uh, happily sell a gun to you uh, personally and trust that you are not a felon, that you haven't committed domestic violence, and that you haven't been committed to a mental institution. But well, there's no hold harmless in this bill. <laughs> that you know that. Okay. There's no more right. harmless. There's no more harmless that, that you know that. And, and frankly, both of us have lived 50 years without knowing each other. And so we really don't know each other. And if that, that if that is your position, then you would want a background check. I would not. Okay, so and for the I, question. I would trust. Yes, sir. For the question, um, this, you talk about the mental health and my mental history. My understanding is when someone does a background check in New Hampshire, <coughs> all they're finding out is whether they have committed a felony. We don't actually have mental health statistics reported. So even the, the preamble of this bill is false, and your statement you just made is false because there is no mental health background check. Um, my understanding is that there's a bill coming to us which will clarify this issue, but relative to the NCIS check, uh, mental health is um, uh, one of the determinant factors, and uh, uh, that is the defining issue for background checks that occur now, and that's why it's in this bill. But they're not in New Hampshire, because we don't, they don't have that report. I understand that, report. but it, it's still within the definition of what is checked in a background check for uh, any gun sale at this point. So it doesn't change um, the fact that that is what occurs now. What it changes, it hopefully someday, is when mental health uh, uh, issues are reported, that those will also be a determining factor in the sale. So my final question is, why wouldn't we just wait to see what happens to the status of that bill before we take up this bill? Wouldn't it make sense to hold it, especially since we write into <coughs> the purpose that we're worried about dangerously mentally ill and domestic abusers information that's not being reported now in New Hampshire? Um, I 
understand what you're saying, but uh, there are those who believe that it is worth moving forward with uh, background checks, expanding them just in this uh, reasonable way. Uh, and uh, I don't think we're going to agree. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Uh, Representative Rice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've, we've heard ample testimony that background checks played no role whatsoever in preventing many of these highly publicized, terrible acts that, that took place in various uh, places around the country over the last several years. <clears throat> played absolutely no role whatsoever. Many of the people already went through background checks <coughs> and somehow went off the rails after that. A background check would never, ever catch anybody like that. On the other hand, many of the other <coughs> more highly publicized uh, tragedies that uh, took place, these uh, uh, mass killings and so forth, they were, they were performed by people who never would have been subject to a background check because they, <coughs> they, had never, they had never had any intention to buy a gun. And what they did is they went off the rails and then they stole a gun, making them a criminal, and we all know that criminals won't abide by a law anyway, by their nature. We heard so, the, the small <coughs> amount of testimony we have heard that says we need background checks claims that they will save lives, except the witnesses who came before the, the subcommittee and said, uh, the, the parents from New York, <coughs> who said, this bill would not have saved my child's life. So if we know that people who commit these crimes are not in any way subject to a background check, and if we know that it doesn't protect lives and wouldn't have protected these others, then I would submit that this is a totally unnecessary piece of legislation because it doesn't do anything. It will not protect, it will not prevent, and all it will do is give gun, uh, gun dealers Licensed gun dealers a chance to make more money than the people have to come through them uh, to make a transaction. It's not going to help any in any <coughs> way. We already have the second lowest uh, gun crime rate uh, in the country behind Maine. And both people in Maine don't, don't do anything bad. But it's, it's just seems that we already have one of the model in the United States, save but one state that why would we want to change that in favor of something that we know doesn't work? Thank you. Representative Sam Blake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, one of my concerns about this bill is the whole concept of knowing somebody's background. And one person did propose to me that uh, if somebody wanted to make a sale, they could have coffee, go out a week later, have coffee again, and that would be sufficient to be a, a no, you know, to be, you know, to know somebody. And the real question is, is, is it really brings into focus the whole question of, you know, how, how is this really going to be enforced? It's really so vague, so arbitrary, that there's just really no way to enforce it. And people will find a way to get around this anyway. So there's no point in even putting this in, uh, simply because of that, that, uh, that vagueness, that arbitrariness. And the other, the other thing that somebody has brought up, which kind of makes this, this whole uh, <coughs> legislation moot, is the fact that with 3D printers, uh, firearms are going to be printable. Uh, there's already <coughs> been a big scandal on the internet where uh, one pattern for a very reasonably working firearm has been released. It's been, it was, uh, there was an effort made to squash it and now it's on over a million computers around the world and being shared on, on lots and lots and lots of uh, internet sets, sites outside the United States. And there's really no way to control that unless, of course, we want to do like Russia did and forbid copy machines, which is what they did. But in our case, we can forbid 3D printers. So in effect, this law is unenforceable, or very soon will be unenforceable, and there's just going to be no way to, to make this work. Representative Munns. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you, fellow members. <coughs> this is a, an important piece of legislation, so I wanted to make sure that I structure my comments in an organized way and I put them down on paper, so please please bear with me. Um, I support this amendment and this bill because I believe we owe it to all law-abiding citizens 
to do whatever we can to stop even one person who should not own a gun who, uh, from being able to do so. Uh, I'm not a hunter, I'm not a gun owner, but I respect the Second Amendment to the Constitution and the right of my fellow citizens who wish to acquire a firearm to do so. I also respect the First Amendment of the Constitution, which says that Congress shall not shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech, and the Fourth Amendment, which says that the right of the people to secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. Freedom of speech, however, does not permit someone to yell fire in a crowded theater. And while I might think that having to empty my pockets, remove my belt, take off my shoes, remove my laptop, place my three ounce liquid <coughs> containers in a plastic bag, and then remove that plastic bag from my suitcase, before subjecting my personal belongings and myself to an x-ray screening might be considered an unreasonable search, we all agree to subject ourselves to that every day at every airport in the country because we, all, we know that it will protect all of us. Long, long ago, we the people, through the representatives we elected, decided that just as, as in the case of the first and the fourth amendments, some limits on the right of an individual to own a firearm were appropriate so that the shared and common interest of all of us could be served. We decided, for example, that certain prohibited persons should not be able to own a firearm. And, and to ensure that no such persons were able to do so, we instituted the practices of background checks, which when you think about it, is very similar to, to the concept of security screenings at our airports. Current federal and state law requires that any seller of firearms who is a federal firearms licensee must conduct a background check on any person who is purchasing a firearm from them unless that purchaser has a valid permit to carry. Background checks are also required for all interstate internet purchases. Since that is the accepted practice, why would we permit someone who does not have a valid permit to carry and who may have failed a background check to be able to legally purchase a firearm <coughs> simply by going someplace else? That simply doesn't make any sense. This bill extends the requirement for a background check to any commercial sale of a firearm in the state of New Hampshire, whether, whether it occurs in person between someone who is not a licensed firearm <coughs> dealer and a private individual at, for example, a gun show or over the internet. The assumption is that in most, if not all of these cases, the two parties to the transaction do not know each other, certainly not well enough to know whether the purchase is prohibited from owning a fire, the purchaser is prohibited from owning a firearm. That being the case, it is in the public's common interest to ensure that a check is done to make sure that this individual is in fact able to own a firearm. Will this provision of the bill result in some additional inconvenience for law-abiding citizens who wish to purchase a firearm in New Hampshire? Yes, it will. Absolutely. And to say anything less would not be honest or fair to those who have raised this as an objection. But it's also a major inconvenience for every law-abiding citizen who is required to go through airport security screenings every day they fly, every time they fly. What the amendment to this bill does do is remove language that would prevent two individuals who knew, knew each other, family members, or as we heard about in the testimony in Reps Hall, members of a gun club, from transferring a firearm between them without the recipient of the firearm first having to pass a background check. That's no longer required. That requirement, uh, if, you, if, you, if you are someone who is legally permitted to own a firearm and you wish to transfer or sell a firearm in a private transaction to someone you know who also is not prohibited, prohibited from owning one, you will be able to do so. No background check is required. And even if it is subsequently discovered that one of you or both of you were not legally able to own a firearm, then you will be subject to a fine not a felony or a jail term as was the case in the original bill in which we heard so much uh, concern expressed in, in public testimony. This bill will not magically prevent any criminal who wants to acquire a firearm from doing so. That is unrealistically and simply wishful thinking. But if we are able to prevent one senseless shooting that saves just one life, then our efforts will have been very worthwhile. It also sends a clear message to everyone in the state and our country that New Hampshire not only respects the right of law-abiding citizens to own a firearm, <coughs> but that we take very seriously the responsibilities that come along with doing so. Thank you for your indulgence in letting me share my thoughts with you. I urge you to join me in voting for this bill and sending it to the floor with the recommendation of <coughs> the Thank you.
Representative Jones. Yes, I would just like to say that what we're talking about here with this amended um, bill is that activities that people do now legally will become illegal. So like if I um, am at a gun show and I have a gun with me or a firearm that I d wouldn't mind selling and I run into a friend, someone I know really well, someone I know doesn't have a felony, <coughs> in the parking lot of that gun show, I cannot sell that firearm to that friend. So. But that's legal to do now. Now I could legally do it, but if this becomes law, I wouldn't be able to do it without going through the background check. There are reasons why people do not want to be in a background check other than that they may be a felon or mentally incompetent. And one of the reasons why they may not want a background check is because these background checks are creating a national registry and people in New Hampshire value their privacy. They don't want to be on a database, also called a registry. And that's why they buy and sell with friends, is because it's legal to do it without a background check. Now you're going to make it harder for law-abiding people to get the tools of self-defense that they need without making them go onto this registry. And to say that class B misdemeanor is no big deal, it's just a fine. Well, it goes on your record, and then when you try to get a job, then you're denied. You can't get a job, can't provide for your family. It is a big deal, a very big deal. <coughs> and um, this bill is just not the New Hampshire way. New Hampshire has always valued the Second Amendment culture, this, the ability to f defend yourself. You know, as a woman, I can really understand what it's like. I mean, especially when I was younger to have problems with possibly somebody stalking me and needing a tool of self-defense right away so that I could defend myself. And the um, NICS system, we heard, has an 8% failure rate. What if I go to a licensed firearms dealer and he does the background check on me because I need to purchase a tool of self-defense and it comes back that I'm denied. But there's that 8% error rate and they don't correct the errors, you know, then what am I going to do? <coughs> this bill would make it so I can't buy a gun from my friend if he posted on Facebook, I've got a gun for sale. <coughs> you know, I can't buy a gun from, without doing a background check. I can't buy a gun from my friend if I need him at the gun show or in the parking lot of the gun show. You're making it harder for people to get what they need to defend themselves, and that puts people at risk. <coughs> Representative Schleifer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I'm sitting here and I'm getting a little mixed up because on the one hand we hear that we are the safest place to live in just about and on the other hand we hear that it's we're, it's so dangerous that in order to defend ourselves we need to get a gun and 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 the idea of having to actually maybe sell the gun to you <coughs> not the gun show but maybe in the neighborhood since it's a friend is a problem so I you know we're either really dangerous and it's so hard to access guns or we're really safe, and in fact, I don't see where instead of getting the gun in the parking lot, we can't just get it in our neighborhood, and so we're not violating the law. And the other thing I keep hearing is only criminals will get weapons, and only criminals will do this and that. But you know, the 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 disgruntled, angry husband who shoots his wife after a, a, in a domestic dispute was not a criminal necessarily before the shooting. So we do in fact register domestic abusers and we do have you know a way of checking whether or not they can go out once their gun is confiscated and get another one. But but you know there are people who do commit crimes that weren't criminals before they committed crimes but might have been on a domestic registry and got around that by going to the the, gun, the uh, commercial private sale. The other thing is, um, <coughs> there's another point I wanted to make. I know, I hate it when that happens too. Yeah. <laughs> you, you will have another chance. I will just have to come back to that. Representative Lutz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I want to I take issue with a couple of things you said, Representative Jones. Mm -hmm. the, the, the hypothetical uh -huh. that you presented where you happen to meet someone at a gun show, mm -hmm. and he says he has a gun, and, 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 and then you might purchase it. 
Right. There's nothing in the bill that would prevent that, because in the in the example that you 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 represented, mm -hmm. your friend was not at the gun show with the express purpose of advertising the fact that he had a gun for sale. That's not a commercial sale. So if he wants to give you his, sell you his gun in the parking lot, that's fine. The second thing is you made reference to a national registry. Uh -huh. There is no national registry. The, the oh. Oh. information is, is retained, and my understanding is that the information is retained at the gun, the, the gun dealers, and there is nothing in this bill that would extend that beyond what the common practice, the current practice is. I, I would like to respond. Please. Okay, um, I re as I read the bill, um, on the first page, line 26, it says commercial sale means a sale, transfer, or exchange of a firearm that takes place at or on the curtilage of a gun show. So that's not conditioned by anything. That's any transfer, any sale, any exchange. <coughs> Do you want, please? Uh, 26. And did you have further comments? Um, just that, as I interpret that line, then I cannot um, buy that gun at that gun show, even though I know the person and the person knows me. Um, the other thing about the National Database Registry, um, you know, we heard testimony that the NICS check is feeding that information into that. We also heard that um, the um, ATF, comes to the uh, gun, sh gun stores, the licensed dealers, and copies those forms, Form 4473. And they are building a database of all of the different transactions of guns. The other thing um, I want to emphasize is that, um, well, I have two things actually to emphasize. One is, is that, you know, just recently, we voted on a number of bills that show that we are anti-database and pro-privacy. Um, let's see, I have it. And, and it's just New Hampshire's culture to be that way. Okay, I have it right here. Okay, we have a very strong pro-privacy culture here. We are anti-database. In 2007, we passed a law opting out of the Federal Real ID Act by an overwhelming margin. Um, we are the only state in the nation that gives citizens the option of deleting their photo and or their social security number from our DMV database. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we killed a bill in the House which would have allowed law enforcement to use license plate scanners, and we did this with a large margin. We are currently the only state in the nation to not grant this authority to law enforcement. Anti-database. And in New Hampshire, we do not mandate the use of E-Verify. Just a couple of weeks ago, we killed a bill in the House which would have mandated state agency use of E-Verify, and we killed that bill with a large mar margin. NICS is a national database registry with an 8% error rate. These errors are never corrected. Sometimes people want to buy a firearm without being put on this registry. HB 1589 makes it harder for these people to do so. I have a constituent in Ward 4 of Rochester. She's a disabled <coughs> female, and she said to me, I want my gun, and I don't want the world to know I have it. Thank you, Representative. Okay, well now I really am confused. So would the clerk and the chair tell me which is it? Is this bill only affect a sale that occurs on the property of a gun show? Or does this a sale affect when there was no gun show involved? <coughs> Because the conversation you and I had was that it's just two people anywhere in the state. But your clerk, Representative Hunt, said it only is affected by a gun show. So I am confused. Which is it? I, I, said that. I thought that the conversation you just said to her was that if it was on the property or not on the property of a gun show, that the transaction could go forward. The bill states that any transaction between two people um, is allowed as long as the two people know each other. Um, and, uh, where does it say? That's it. What we're looking for, frankly, Mr. Chairman, 
is that, is that I think that the debate is pretty clear because we're, we're looking at this, this commercial sale definition and saying that this definition is problematic. If you want to tell us where it doesn't cover or what it does cover, that would be fine. I mean, I think we can live with something if we understand what the rules are. But at this point, it doesn't do that. And it creates more confusion and, frankly, a legal nightmare. Um, and we have been through this bill several times. Um, it, you know, <laughs> but doesn't mean we put it out of the if it's not right. We never, we never send, we try not to ever send a bill out of this committee if it's not right. And I understand that there's a need to want and a desire to get it pushed out so of this is committee. The Please. Is the confusion the parking lot? Because I'm reading this and, and it's talking about a gun show. Exactly. So the confusion I have is if I happen to be in the state house parking lot and want to sell to my good representative brother, do I need to do a background check because I don't know where he was 50 when he lived in all those years in New York? Wait, that's a different. You, you were talking about that before. I'm asking you specifically. Your, your, well, everybody your, keeps saying this is all about a gun show. If this is really, it's, but it's not about a gun show. That's what's so offensive about it. It's always said this it's bill, about commercial it's, sales. It's, it's, about, about and it's not even commercial. I hate the word commercial. It has nothing to do with commercial. I'm sorry. When I sell to another person, I don't think I'm in the business of selling guns. Right. Okay? Gun but to, that's what I'm saying. Is the problem is this definition, you could, you, one side could say, oh, this is just a narrow little bill. It just affects one little transaction that, that, that you just happen to not have a display, or maybe you did have a display, or somehow you were doing something in the gun show, which as far as I know, everything this definition, in some people's interpretation, is current law, okay, because you're in the business. You know, when I hear the word commercial, that sounds like I'm in the business of selling something. I right. mean, you are haphazardly, or, or I'm, I'm just doing it as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a sideline. It's commercial. And then you define this, but then we get into the fact is that no, this bill is really about anybody selling to anybody else who knows for a fact that that person is not a villain, which is, uh, is, is, is nobody knows that. So can I go back to my question about your possible definition of commercial sale in this bill? Take out the word commercial. What is the bill about? The bill is about, if, if, you, if you would allow, uh, commercial sale, which defines gun show, um, and you're right, Representative uh, Jones, in the curtilage of, or pursuant to an advertisement, posting, listing, or display. Um, and Which has then, nothing to do with gun show, right? And, no, that has to do with, nothing to do with the gun That show. has to do with commercial sales, correct. No no, 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 I'm not commercial. I'm just a happy homeowner who <coughs> happens to have an exit. I happen to have, a, my, I was will the gun, let, I don't want let, the gun, let, I just want to get rid of the gun. Let me finish. Thank you. Um, the exception, this chapter shall not apply to a non-commercial, uh, second page, uh, line 27. This chapter shall not apply to a non-commercial private sale, transfer, or exchange of a firearm between individuals, provided neither party to the transaction is a prohibited person. If the status of either party's eligibility to own or possess, possess a firearm cannot be ascertained, this transaction shall be completed through a federally licensed firearm dealer pursuant to 159E22. What is ascertain? How do I ascertain? You told me you told me you didn't you hadn't committed a felon? Um, what does ascertain mean? We can go on about this, but I think we understand we can um, we can challenge our perspectives, our perceptions on uh, what this bill intends, but I am comfortable that it intends what I have stated. You are not. And we can have this argument uh, repeatedly in various venues. Representative Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <coughs> back to Representative Martin. I guess the question is, we're trying to make this a safer place. And if <coughs> this bill was to save that one life, I can say I would be for it. But I don't see how this bill even touches the criminals. This isn't. This bill is nothing about criminals or soon to be criminals, as Representative Schlepper pointed out. It's only going to touch a law-abiding citizen. The domestic abusers that weren't a criminal the day before, they're going to go out. Even if we pass this bill, they're going to get that background check passed. And if they really want to do it, they're going to take out their life. If that's the case, this bill is just going to save one life. And I guess my biggest issue with this. Is I moved to New Hampshire for a reason. I love the Lutheran High School. This bill originated in San Francisco. I 
and we all know that here. So I took, a, I went on the internet and looked, and between San Francisco and Oakland, the population is 1.225 million, which is relative to 1.3 here in the state. Last year, 2013, there were 130 homicides in that greater area, just Oakland and San Francisco. Well, we know they have very, very <coughs> tight gun laws. Here, our, our laws are working. We've only had 30 homicides. So what exactly are we trying to fix? I, I, I don't know, and I, I can't support this bill on this ground. Representative Schleifer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think that demographically we have to have a much longer conversation about how different New Hampshire is from the Oakland San Francisco area. I've been there, you've probably been there too, so it's not like just taking one and plumping it down in the other and say we've got the same population base, therefore we've got the same culture and the same issues and the same struggles. But I, I'd like to say that the one thing that we can't know is we can't know how many people who had to, to go through a background check because they went through a gun dealer or, or didn't go to that gun dealer and didn't buy that gun because they knew they would have to go through a background check. We don't know and we will never know that piece. It's what I was saying before, until somebody actually <coughs> commits that act that they didn't plan to and nobody thought they would, we don't know how many of those people exist that were in fact discouraged from getting the weapon and killing the family member or killing themselves or whatever because we had some measures in place. And this to me is very narrowly just taking one aspect of commercial sales, and I'm sorry, I still don't understand what the <coughs> commercial sale objection is, but one piece of it and, and, and plugging that in. Did we sell one of something that was still in commercial? Excuse me. I'm, I'm, We'll take uh, the two comments from Representative Sandlake and Rice, and then we will move to uh, Representative Sandlake. Yeah, I actually would like to take some exception to that last statement, that we can't know how many people would be saved. And the whole reason that the whole science of epidemiology exists is to, to figure out exactly that kind of thing. And so that is something that, before we act on a bill like this, we really should know what we're talking about. There are plenty of statisticians and epidemiologists who can study that, and, and that's what we should be doing. Thank you, Representative Rice. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you, you mentioned that there's a big difference between San Francisco and Oakland, though, Representative Schleifer. No, I said between San Francisco and Oakland and New Hampshire. And, and New Hampshire, I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, there's, there's a lot of difference between San Francisco and Oakland, too, believe me. I used to live in that neck of the woods. Um, <laughs> the very fact that there is a difference is exactly the point. It's exactly the point where they may need legislation for background checks or whatever, our track record here, the real world track record, not something that's pulled out of the sky, we don't need it. We're already the safest. We are so safe. This business has saved one more life. We've already saved more lives than almost any place in the country. We know right now that the places that have the highest amount of gun regulations, registrations, background checks, uh, you name it, those are the places that have the highest crime rates, the highest murder rates. You mentioned you, you were confused about uh, uh, the, whether it was uh, the, the rationale for why you should carry, it was so dangerous that you should carry, or so safe that you don't need to. No, one of the reasons it's so safe is because a lot of people in New Hampshire do carry. And the criminals don't know who, and that's why it's safer. Somebody just told me today they, an anecdote, uh, they, they went into a shopping mall and there was a place, a sign on the top of a store, the wood of a store, that said gun-free zone. Gee, let's rub that place because there's nobody there to, to contest it. You, you, you mentioned that, uh, that it's, you think that the domestic violence can come anywhere. Well, if you're concerned about domestic violence, then why don't we investigate or have rules to register <coughs> hammers and knives and all the other weapons that have many times more murders done with them? Domestic <coughs> violence is done with hammers and knives a lot more than it's ever done with, with, with guns of any type. So if, you're, if your concern is there, why don't we go after the problem instead of coming up with these phony, uh, we think it might happen, or say we're going to pass this bill because we think another one might come along later on that will help us to enforce this. We need to be in the real world right now. We need to pass a rule because we need it, not because somebody thinks they'd like to control the guns. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Um, did I hear you correctly? Did you say you were stopping discussion to take the vote? I did say that. I would. I still have something I would like to say. Please. Okay, great. 
Um, my question is, um, how many people on commerce have read uh, chapter one, RSA chapter 159, the state's gun laws, in totality, all 11 pages? Okay, not very many of us. Uh, I'm really upset with the process here that this bill went to commerce, where we really don't know the state's gun laws instead of criminal justice, where they know them very well. And, and um, that concerns me. So I was reading um, all of this yesterday, and I was noticing some really interesting themes in our current state gun laws. And they really conflict with the information in this bill. Um, first of all, RSA 159.6 states that self-defense shall be considered a proper purpose for obtaining a concealed carry license. And this just shows all of us how important the uh, concept of self-defense is here in the state of New Hampshire. The ability for the person to defend themselves is paramount. Um, RSA 159.6 is very interesting. The fee for a New Hampshire resident to get a concealed carry license is only $10. This means we want everybody to be able to get one. The ability to arm oneself and defend oneself, it's very important. It only costs $10 for a concealed carry license. <coughs> RSA 159.6c, pertaining to a concealed carry license. This is really important too, because if a person applies for a concealed carry license and is denied, our state law says that the burden of proof shall be upon the issuing authority to demonstrate by clear and convincing proof why any denial, suspension, or revocation was justified, failing which the court shall enter an order directing the issue authority to grant or reinstate the petitioner's license. Now it's just too bad that NICS does not operate this way when it denies someone the right to buy a tool for self-defense due to its 8% error rate. NICS does, doesn't have to demonstrate by clear and convincing proof and there is no court to appeal to. And then RSA 159.8b makes the penalty for a violation of RSA 159.8a, which is sales to non-residents, by a dealer a mere violation with a suspension of his license for only three months and a fine of no more than $100. Why does HB 1589 penalize law-abiding New Hampshire citizens so much more harshly for violating its provisions, which are currently legal activities? And then lastly, RSA 15914 states that New Hampshire citizens may sell to a person personally known to him. This has been our state law since 1967. HB 1589 puts restrictions on that activity. Do we really want to do that? Will restricting that activity keep criminals from obtaining guns? I submit no, and I beg everyone to please vote ITL on this bill. Thank you, Representative Jones. Representative Tucker, I agree that we all want to find ways to decrease guns <coughs> in our state and in our country. And uh, we've heard that from almost everybody who's uh, talked about this bill. Um, some of us believe that this is a step in that direction, and I would uh, support uh, any effort that you might make to, uh, like Representative uh, Jones suggested, relative to studying the issue so that we can find ways to continue to do that in New Hampshire. The clerk will call the roll. Um, ought to pass uh, my uh, motion. I did. Uh, Second. Moved by Representative Butler and seconded by Representative Lund on 0371H. Um, um, Re Chairman, am I supposed to move my amendment before you move yours? No. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay, so this is on the amendment, correct? Correct. 0371H. Yeah. Representative Scott? <coughs> yes. Representative Shirtliff? Yes. Representative Hammond? Yes. Representative Mulholland? Yes. Representative Bedeen? Yes. Representative McNamara? Yes. Representative Munns? Yes. Representative Scarlato? Yes. Representative Williams? Yes. Representative Hunt? No. Representative Flanders? No. Representative Belanger? No. Representative Rice? No. Representative Tucker? No. Representative Jones? No. Representative Murphy? No. Representative
Representative Sandblade? No. Representative Butler? Yes. 0371H passes 10 to 8. And Representative Jones? I move um, <laughs> amendment number 2014-0403H ought to pass. It uh, replaces the entire bill by establishing a committee to study the correlation between current New Hampshire law and the low violent crime rate in the state. You all were here when we discussed it earlier before the subcommittee. Um, there are uh, surveys of law enforcement and studies that show that um, <coughs> universal background checks do not work and that law enforcement agrees that they are not effective. Thank you. Second? Representative Tucker, will you second that? I will second that. Thank you. Further discussion? Representative Tucker. Um, as, as we know, if you read the article, or the uh, memo from the NRA, that it is illegal uh -huh. to currently, legally illegal to knowingly sell a firearm to a person who has prohibited it, and it is very much a felony for that prohibited person to buy, possess, or own a firearm. So again, the bill, the uh, amendment we just passed is going to do absolutely nothing. We already have it in the statute. <coughs> so I would support Representative <coughs> amendment that we have to study this and find out what we're doing right. Like. Thank you, Representative Munz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And maybe this is a point of parliamentary inquiry, but I, I just want to make sure that I'm, that I'm clear and everybody else is clear is that if we were to pass Representative Jones's amendment, that would replace the amendment that we just passed and essentially become the bill. Correct. Thank you. Representative Schleifer. Um, I also think study is a good idea. Um, I have to vote against this because it does replace the entire bill, but also because I think that it goes. Um, a little further than I think one study needs to go. I think a, a tighter study bill that's more focused. I think Section 5, for instance, goes into the criminal justice system and I just think it makes it way bigger. So. The clerk will call the roll on the amendment 0403H. And ought to pass. Representative Schlackman. No. Um, Representative Shirtliff. No. Representative Hammond. No. Representative Mulholland. No. Representative Dean. No. Representative McNamara. No. Representative Munns. No. Representative Scarlato. Yes. Representative Williams. No. Representative. I'm sorry, you said no. No. Representative Hunt. Yes. Representative Flanders? Yes. Representative Belanger? Yes. Representative Rice? Yes. Representative Tucker? Yes. Representative Jones? Yes. Representative Murphy? Yes. Representative Sandblade? Yes. Representative Butler? No. The motion fails uh, nine to nine. <coughs> and we will continue to have <coughs> No, we have another vote. And, I'm sorry, yes, you're right. Um, ought to pass as amended, moved by Representative Butler, seconded by Representative Munns. And when the clerk is ready.
will not go on consent calendar. <laughs> 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 <laughs>